Hey guys, it's Charlie. I hope you're all well and doing good. So today I am going to be doing my October favourites. And this is the first time I have done a favourites video in probably since about like last August I think was the last one. And it isn't because I don't like filming, it's just I don't always feel like I've got enough stuff to warrant a whole favourites video. But this month there has been so much stuff that I have been loving that I just am so excited to share with you. Um, I thought I would do one. But first things first, before I get into that, um, I just want to ask you guys, what do you think to the quality of this video? Because I am filming for the first time on my new camera that I recently bought. So I've been using my Samsung NX Mini um, for like most of this year. But the thing is, it wasn't, there was something wrong with the uh, focus. It wasn't holding its focus. It kept going in and out, which you probably noticed in videos. And it didn't matter what I did to it, that same thing still happened. And then it started to have like a clicking noise in the background. Um, I don't know if you guys heard that, but I could hear it when I was editing. And it was just really annoying. So I've been looking like for the last few weeks to try and find a good one. Um, and the one I went with in the end is the Canon... Um, EOS M10 um, I just really liked it because it's supposed to be like a DSLR but in a more compact frame so um, hopefully it has made some difference there is so much more to get used to on this camera though so there is a possibility that the whole of this video will be out of focus because I'm still trying to get used to it hopefully that isn't the case um, but you know I've just got to learn you've got to start somewhere haven't you but um, it seems to be a really lovely camera at the moment, so I'm hoping that um, it does. It is good quality and stuff. It takes a lovely photo, so I'm hoping the video will be the same. Uh, but yeah, I just wanted to let you guys um, know that. Please do let me know down below if you do think it's good, because um, I'd be interested to know if there's anything I need to sort of change on it. Then let me know that too. I'm, I'm, you know, your input is always important to me. Um, so yeah, without further ado, let's get straight into my favourites. To me, I'm gonna start with um, food and drink. I think so. My first thing is a tea because we're in winter now, and tea, of course, is like you know you just have to have tea in winter. And I don't really drink tea and coffee like normal tea and coffee. So I'm always on the lookout for like herbal teas green teas things like that and recently i came across this one and this is the twinings um gingerbread tea if i just show you a close-up hopefully this will be there we go this is the twinings gingerbread green tea and i picked this up because obviously i've not been very well this month and everyone kept telling me that ginger really settles your tummy but ginger is a kind of funny flavour it can sometimes be overpowering but these are so nice it's like Christmas in a mug seriously I just have been loving this and it really does help to settle your tummy uh, my dad like the other night he was feeling really sick and he had some and almost instantly he started to feel better it was it's crazy so yeah I highly recommend these um they're really really lovely so those are those and then the food thing i have i did show this in my favorites like two years ago because these things come out especially for halloween and they are my favorite thing i literally go to the supermarket and i pick up like six or seven boxes of them because i'm like when they stop selling them after halloween i want to have them stocked up um so these are the mr kipling toffee terror whirls um so basically these are like Viennese whirls, but except without jam, they have toffee. Oh my God, these are the best things ever. They just melt in your mouth. Um, and if you need like a sort of sugar hit, these are, oh my God, oh my God. I just love these so, so much. I'm a little bit too addicted to them. Um, and yeah, I just, if you can get some of these from your local supermarket or wherever, please get some and try them out for yourselves because honestly, they are the best thing ever. And I always so look forward to them during the winter time, uh, the Halloween time. So yeah, these are amazing. So next up, I have a candle and I did briefly show this in my room tour because it is my favorite thing right now. And this is the Wickford & Co Halloween candle. 
This smells... Oh my god, it smells like sherbet. It's so, so nice. Now, I'm somebody that I religiously buy candles only from the brand Yankee because even though they're really like extortionately priced, they're the only candles I've ever found that actually smell how they're supposed to smell and like make the room smell when you burn them. And my lovely friend Erin um, over at Rask Queen, she bought one of these earlier this month and put a picture on her Instagram. And I was like, oh my god, it says Halloween on it. I need to have it. Now, it was like £2.99, um, and usually a jar this size for a Yankee can will be about £24 or something. So I wasn't expecting much from it, but holy cow, it smells insane, and it makes the whole house smell amazing. I just, I've been burning this every night, and it looks like I haven't burned anything, but I've been burning this every night since I got it. it it's just honestly amazing and i will definitely be checking out wickford and co um some more and buying some more of these because for 2.99 for this like massive jar i just think i think that's amazing like i honestly do i wish you guys could smell this through the screen oh my god so amazing this candle is highly recommend checking out wickford and co for candles um next up i have a p uh, fashion we'll do fashion next okay so next up um, I have a couple of fashion bits um, so the first thing is a choker I've really been loving chokers this month and this one here in particular I hope this is gonna focus on it um, it's got a little UFO on it I bought this from um, H&M for like two pounds or something ridiculous I've been living in this. Oh my god, it is so amazing. And I get so many people saying to me, where did you get your choker? It's so, it's just so lovely and delicate and it looks so great on. I just, I really love this thing. And for two pounds, I mean, really, I really love H&M stuff at the moment. This jumper that says, with my witches, this is also from H&M I picked up recently. I'm just really digging their stuff at the moment. And it's just so lovely. I've been wearing this to death. Um, and the other thing is kind of like a dressing gown. Um, well, it's kind of like a dressing gown come sort of cardigan thing. So it looks like this. It is this big old fluffy thing with this with a little pom-pom on the hood. Oh my God, this thing is so warm. Now, one of my favourite things in the winter is going out and buying new pyjamas. I just love it. And I saw this recently in Matalan for like £14. And... I just had to have it. I just, I just had to have it. Um, it is so, so warm and cosy. It's quite oversized. Um, I got it in like a bigger size than I am because I love things like that. And it is so warm. Like I've been wearing it around the house. Even like during the day when I have my actual clothes on, I just put this on when I'm cold. It is amazing. And I just think for £14, um, it's lovely. As I say, it doesn't really have like a belt or anything. So it's not like a proper dressing gown um but it is so nice i absolutely love this um so that is that the next thing i have is kind of a random thing it is a mug because of course you know we're in the season of tea you need mugs um and this is probably my favorite mug that i own i just i'm in love i just keep looking at it so it is this um woman in black mug so it's got the woman in black picture on the front and then on the back my favorite bit it has this little bit of writing that says it was 9.30 on Christmas Eve. This is literally the perfect winter mug. I just absolutely am in love with this. I got this from Susan Hill's actual shop, uh, susanhill.org. I'll put the link to it down below. And you can get like tea towels and random bits and bobs with the woman in black stuff on. And um, I, it was like £7, I think. Um, and I am just obsessed with it. It isn't the biggest of mugs, but um, when I have tea or hot chocolate, I always only like to have a small amount anyway, so it's perfect for me. But I'm just loving, I just love this so much. It's like my favourite thing, um, my favourite mug that I own. Oh, here we go. Look, there's a website on the bottom that you can go to as well. Um, I don't know if that's going to focus. There we go which is longbarnbooks.com. So check that one out too. I'll put the links down below as I say anyway, but yeah, that's that. 
Um, what shall we do next? Let's do movies next. So the first one I just recently showed in my recommended creepy um, movie video, um, and that is Friend Request. I had to put this in here because I just love this film so much. I just want everyone to watch it. Um, as I said, it's about this young woman here who is called Laura and she befriends this girl in her psych class who is a bit of a social misfit but she feels a bit sorry for her so she accepts her friend request on Facebook and everything is fine to start with but then this girl starts to become like overly obsessive with her she doesn't leave her alone and when Laura looks further down her Facebook page she can see that it's filled with stuff that's really dark and macabre and so he decides to unfriend her and things start to go wrong from there her friends start to die in really strange ways i keep saying to everyone this is like the ring but for the social media age i honestly can't recommend this film highly enough i just loved it it's such a good jump scare movie i really think this is fantastic and i highly recommend it um and then the other one i want to recommend is um, actually quite an old um, film, but I recently picked it up again um, after listening to a podcast called Seriously Strange. They have a YouTube channel as well, I think, both the people that do that channel, uh, Rob and Kaylee, they do have a YouTube channel. Um, and one of the podcasts they did was on the case of Lissa Lam. Now, if you haven't heard of Lissa Lam, type her name into Google or YouTube and it is basically this young girl she was like i think abroad with her school or college um and she went missing and then her body was found in the water tank of this hotel um but there's so many like creepy things to the story that just don't make sense and one of the creepiest things is that if you search on youtube there is you can watch the cctv footage of her in a lift and it's like she's sort of hiding from someone and then talking to someone and the lift won't shut and then she steps outside and she starts doing all these weird things with her arms and stuff and then she walks away and the lift shuts honestly just talking about it gives me goosebumps it is one of the creepiest things i think i've ever seen and to know that this is like a real thing it's just so weird and during this podcast they spoke about the film dark water because this they said this film holds so many similarities and for a while people thought, you know, maybe this film was based on that. But this film actually came out a long time before the Lissa Lamb thing. Um, and it just really made me want to watch it again. And oh my goodness me, if you can listen to the Lissa Lamb story and then watch this film, the similarities are ridiculous. Like it is eerie how much of this is so very similar. Um, and this is a really great film anyway it's about um, a mum and her little daughter who move into this really run down uh, flat in this like apartment building that is just horrible and they keep getting this leak in their roof like dark dark water coming through their roof and it's kind of supernaturally and it's a really fantastic film but if you can listen to the Lisa Lam case first as I say and then watch this it, honestly it's so eerie the similarities with this and if you can watch the japanese version as well because that's brilliant too um but yeah really been enjoying this film this month and it's just it's just spooky um so those are movies the next thing that i have is two adult coloring books now i have heard a couple of people this month saying coloring should be left for children it's not an adult thing to do and i just want to say to those people hush up because I obviously you guys know I have anxiety and I know other people with health problems that do a lot of adult colouring and get a lot of adult colouring books and honestly they help me so much like I don't see what the problem is and I found these two recently and I think they're my favourite ones that I own so the first one is this Edgar Allan Poe one um, and so each uh, picture has a little quote from one of his books or a bit of his poetry I you guys know Edgar Allan Poe is like one of my favorite all-time writers and when I saw this I just everything's just fallen over um, I just had to have it I 
it's just the best thing ever i just love it and this is by odessa begay um in case you want to look it up and yeah i just absolutely love this um it's just it's such a stunning stunning book i just i love it so that's that one and the other one which is probably my favorite adult coloring book that i own i am completely in love with this and this is called the beauty of horror and this is by alan robert oh my god guys seriously this basically tells kind of a story as it goes through so like i'll read you this little um passage that's at the front here it says there was once a girl named guliana belay she lost her way in the woods at the young age of nine through the forest and the trees she discovered things were not as they seemed she found beauty in the dark and horror in the light what once was dead was now somehow alive so she carefully placed many items on her path to try and remember the twisted way back oh poor guliana will haunt these pages forever unless you uncover all of her treasures so you basically as you're going through you have to find these things it's so cool i just want to show you some of the pictures in this so you've got like a killer clown which is so cool um very apt for the moment with all these people dressing as clowns um then you have this really creepy like um alice in wonderland type scene um i'm just trying to find my favorite one i probably should have marked them out uh where is it Mm -mm -mm. this one this is my favorite it's like all doll heads i just think it is the coolest thing ever um was there any more cool ones near the front that i could show you and then there's like people hanging in the trees as little guliana goes off into the woods um oh it's just the most fantastic book and i have started to color one which I think is really cool. Uh, I haven't finished it yet, but I'm just, I love this so, so much. The only thing is, it is really very hard to find. Um, so you might have to go onto eBay or the book depository maybe, but if you can grab a copy, do, because it's amazing. And then the last three things I have for you are books. Um, a couple of them I have already talked about more recently. But they just had to be in here. Um, so the first one is one I've mentioned a lot in my videos recently. And that is Shirley Jackson's We Have Always Lived in the Castle. This book is probably one of my favourite books that I've read this year. I still can't get over how much I enjoyed it. If you haven't read any Shirley Jackson then you need to pick it up. This is a story about a young girl called Mary Cat. Who lives with her sister Constance and their uncle Julian. I forgot his name for a second there. In this big old house. The rest of their family you find out has been poisoned and Constance was basically blamed for this but she was acquitted but now this whole village that they're in hates them there's a certain sort of fear towards them so Mary Cat, Constance and Uncle Julian they spend most of their time in this house and then their cousin Charlie comes to visit and things start to go a bit wrong this was so dark but not in an out and out horror way. It just had this sense of unease and blackness like running all the way through it. I loved this so much and I can't wait to read some more Shirley Jackson. So that is that one. The other one is another one, as I say, that I've spoken about a lot recently. And that is When They Fade. Um, I'm going to read you the inside of this one because I feel like it's hard to explain. And it takes quite a long time for me to explain. So it says... Um, Tatum is the only person at school who knew the truth about her affair her best friend Claudette has been having with a married teacher and at the time confiding in an adult seemed like the right thing to do but now everyone has turned against Tatum painting her as a liar and a rat when her classmates begin to bully her she assumes they'll eventually get bored and move on but as their pranks grow increasingly malicious no place feels safe to her anymore Molly is a hitchhiker Molly a hitchhiker was brutally murdered in the early 1970s but there is no life for her instead she has found herself marooned with a crowd of other people who have also died tragically 
Molly is able to fade back to Earth for a few fleeting moments. And when she fades, she finds herself hitchhiking once again and telling the unsuspecting drivers who stop for her things about their future only she can see. One foggy night, Tatum sneaks out for a drive. The teenage hitchhiker she picks up doesn't talk much until she suddenly turns to Tatum and says, you're going to die, it will hurt, you'll be alone and no one will help you and then she disappears. As the two girls' stories converge, Tatum and Molly discover that figuring out how to save each other may be the only way to save themselves. This book, if you like The Lovely Bones, you need to pick this up. If you like um, paranormal mysteries, if you like edge of your seat books, then you need to pick this up. I love this book so much and I just fell for these characters and I really cared for the like, like there's some really sad bits in this story as well that you should be prepared for and i don't really like sad books but this was just wonderful it was written so so well and it just i was hooked from the first page to the last it took me like three weeks to read this purely because i read it so slowly just because i didn't want it to come to an end it is the most fantastic book and i will be recommending this to everyone from now on and then the last favourite I have to show you um, is a book that I'm actually currently Halfway reading. i through it right now, but I am loving it so much. It is just perfect for this time of the year. And this is A Frozen Charlotte by Alex Bell. Um, this is about a girl called Sophie who goes to stay in this big old house in Scotland with her uncle and her cousins. But there's like something wrong with this house to do with... The frozen charlotte dolls that are there and all these spooky things start to happen and i will do a review on it more in depth once i finished but this is just a lot more creepy than i was actually expecting i just i'm really 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 enjoying this it is the perfect halloween read and i literally started this like a day ago uh, and as i say i'm over halfway through already because I just need to know what's going to happen. And honestly, it says on the back here, not for younger readers. And I absolutely think that is right. Because it is a lot spookier than I was expecting it to be. And there's some really, like, gory bits. Like, um, Sophie's youngest cousin, Lilius. She has this fear of bones. And she, like, tries to cut the bones out of herself. Like, honestly... It's definitely for more mature readers. And if you're somebody that gets creeped out easy, I wouldn't recommend it. But other than that, it's a fantastic book that I'm thoroughly enjoying. So that's it. Those are my October favourites. Let me know down below what you have been loving this month. And I will see you all very soon.